Welcome back. In this section, we're going to be looking at a chapter entitled The Origins of Anti-Mexican Sentiment. It's a very important chapter because it will frame, frankly, the rest of the semester, the history that follows up until the present to a great extent. In this particular chapter, we're looking at the origins, again, of anti-Mexican sentiment. The author proposes to us that before the U.S. and Mexico met as neighbors, if you will, there was already a long history of animosity, not as Mexicans and Americans, but as Spaniards and uh, English, as Protestants and Catholics. And so we see in his proposal that the settlement of the United States comes at a time of a very strong anti-Catholic sentiment. Uh, he discusses, for example, uh, terms that are important for us, like Hispanophobia. Hispanophobia is a fear of everything that is Spanish. Uh, why? Because Spain at the time was the strongest Catholic country in the world. And wherever Spain went, went the Catholic Church. Uh, the idea of the sword and the cross working together. So the Protestant world, certainly the English, saw the Spaniards not just as expanding themselves politically and militarily across the world, but also spreading Catholicism. Uh, as we read the chapter, you'll notice that there were those in the Protestant world who saw the Catholic Church as, as blasphemous, right, as uh, anti-Christian in a way. So that would be seen as a, as a danger, if you will. So Hispanophobia, again, is, is the perception or the fear of Spain because it does spread Catholicism uh, throughout the world at this time in context, at this time in question. We also look at the term called the Black Legend, La Leyenda Negra in Spanish which is this collection of stereotypes that everything that the Spanish do is evil, brutal, savage, morally corrupt, la leyenda negra. So we see these, again, um, conflicts early on, cultural collisions, if you will, playing already a role in the anti-Spanish sentiment, right, that exists there. One of the things the chapter addresses, for example, is also the Elizabethan model, the idea that there's an, an, a racial perfection, if you will, right, in that white... Um, uh, blue-eyed people are, are perfect, if you will, and uh, there's the antithesis to that, which will be black. And that the Spanish, in this particular Elizabethan model, is towards the bottom of the scale because of Moorish miscegenation, the mixing with the uh, Moorish um, uh, peoples, uh, looking at the 711-492 invasion of what is now Spain, of course. Uh, so, again, but all that together eventually will become an anti-Mexican sentiment, because if you consider the Spanish as toward the bottom of the scale, then the Mexicans are further, if you go bad, or uh, further uh, uh, worse than the Spaniard, uh, because the Mexican now has indigenous ancestry in him, right? So, again, think in context. What we're talking about here is an early, uh, strong, anti-Catholic, anti-Spanish sentiment that naturally gave way to an anti-Mexican sentiment. So by the time the United States and Mexico come together as neighbors, by the time that the Mexican Republic opens its borders to Americans to come and colonize Mexican territory, there's already a very anti-Catholic, anti-Spanish, anti-Mexican sentiment that will only uh, be, uh, let's say, um, further um, supported you know, by manifest destiny in terms of an agenda that the West must be controlled by the Americans. I hope you enjoy the chapter.